Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the show here, and welcome back, Stella Escobedo. Thank After you. After a couple months off with that beautiful baby of yours, Milana, getting so big, we're so glad to have you back in studio with us. Thank you so much. It was obviously very weird to leave her this morning. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I left, I know. and I told my husband, I looked at him, I said, take care of my baby, Oh, please. you're in good hands with us. <laughs> you're, you're, you're surrounded by friends here, so uh, we'll make time fly with you thank here. You, thank welcome you. Welcome back. We really thank did you. miss you. And, Netta, thank you so much for the care package. Sure. I mean, <laughs> mom needs some pampering. <laughs> on your first day back right. to work after maternity leave, I mean, whatever can ease you in. Uh, yeah, we're here for you to help you with that. And of course, Gilbert will take wonderful care of your baby. We know that. <laughs> a great dad as well and a great mama. So we're glad to have you back. And good morning, everybody. Time now is 6.01. And we do have gray skies out there. This is the view from Pacific Beach. As you see the pier right there, uh, see a couple surfers. They're the brave ones that hang right by the pier. I'm not sure why people do that. I would go as far away as possible from those things. Uh, but here's a look at that sun coming up over our clouds. How pretty is this? Yeah, when you wake up early, this is what you get to see. It's uh, sunrise officially was at 542 and yeah, we still see those clouds. I'll let you know all about our temperatures and where they're headed later on. Jenny. Do we are dealing with uh, that overnight fatal crash that Evan Narani has been reporting on. This is impacting the five. I know you can see these icons here, exclamation marks. We've got delays starting to build up through Del Mar as well. South on the five currently that entrance ramp to Carmel Valley Road is shut down. We do have crews on the scene. Evan is there as well, so he's got real time updates. That southbound drive still shut down according to my maps and according to CHP. You can see that purple here. So again, at about Carmel Valley, that's where it is shut down. People have been detouring using that local bypass, so it has been kind of easing that congestion. However, since it is 602 and that volume is starting to build, those delays come along with it. You have nine miles an hour. This is only a few miles stretch that I'm seeing that backup. You can see the northbound side just a little heavy as you're approaching the 56, but overall not too bad. The rest of your travel times, well, they're just that. They're not too bad. Coronado Bridge, we've got volume across the board and up to the North County. It is quiet at 602. Stella. Jenny, thank you. And we are staying on top of that breaking news of a deadly crash involving a wrong way driver along the five. This happened along the southbound lanes near 50, the 56 there. News 8's Evan Narani live in Carmel Valley with an update for us. What can you tell us, Evan? Yeah, good morning to you, Stella and Eric. You heard from Jenny just minutes ago talking about uh, how for a while those southbound lanes of the five were completely closed and just seconds ago they reopened. So it looks like now traffic can pass through the southbound lanes of the five at Carmel Valley Road, just south of the 56, where previously hours ago they were closed completely and all those vehicles needed to take the bypass lane. So now we have traffic flowing smoothly once again and plenty of it here at the six o'clock hour. All of this coming just hours after a fatality on the southbound five. This happened just past midnight, closer to 1 a.m., where paramedics say at least one person was killed and multiple people multiple people were trapped in their vehicles. So between about 1249, so 1 a.m. all the way through about 530, we saw those southbound lanes of the five completely closed. P vehicles were able to travel south on those bypass lanes. There was also a time frame where they were uh, clearing out those vehicles and someone had passed through the barricades onto the southbound five. Police stopped that vehicle and then let him go uh, back on his way. However, at this point, we are still seeing that a couple of those on ramps onto the southbound five are still closed. They're working on reopening some of those on ramp lanes. It does seem like, however, traffic is sm flowing smoothly both southbound and northbound on the five here on our Tuesday morning. We'll keep you updated on what we see here, but for now, it looks like those vehicles are able to travel normally. And uh, we'll, uh, of course, keep you uh, updated on any of the latest information. I'll send things back to you. All right, nice to see those uh, lanes opening up there again. Thanks, Evan. An investigation underway into this car fire along the 8. It happened just after 1230 this morning on the westbound lanes near College Avenue. CHP try to figure out what exactly led up to the crash that involved three cars. One of them caught fire. A group of Good Samaritans pulled out a man who was trapped inside the car that was on fire. We heard from one of them who is also a service member. I can tell everyone else was pretty flustered, so and I was pretty calm-headed already. But when I rolled up in the seat, obviously I'm shaking. I'm still shaking a little bit, but uh, it's a little bit nerve-wracking. But being in the military helps you calm those nerves and just be able to be cool and under pressure. 
Boy, some quick work by him. Nice work. The man trapped inside one of the cars was taken to the hospital. We're waiting an update from CHP on how he's doing. Crews treated a number of others who were not seriously hurt in that crash. And today marks the start of sea lion pupping season, where female sea lions in La Jolla give birth and care for their young. Councilman Joe LaCava will reveal new signage and education, educational material to keep the animals and visitors safe. This comes as animal rights activists file a lawsuit against a 4th of July fireworks show over La Jolla Cove. They argue it could disturb the sea lions and be dangerous for pups who can't swim yet. Well, you can make a big difference and make sure all local families do not go hungry, especially our kids. Yes, and today we are kicking off the Schools Out Hunger Not Summer Food Drive. News 8's Chris Groh joining us live at Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank. This is in Miramar with a closer look. Good morning to you, Chris. Good morning, Eric and Stella, especially good morning to you, Stella. Welcome back. And guys, this is an all inclusive effort here to make sure that we are helping feed families. And one of those big partners here is Vons and Albertsons. And joining us from Vons and Albertsons is Dan Marlowe. And Dan, we're here with one of these red bins and these are going to be at the stores. What do people do with this? So people can come in and actually donate their own food if they'd like and buy canned vegetables and uh, soups and pastas. Or they can just let the cashier know how many bags they'd like to donate for $5. And again, it's a great turnout from the community who have actually donated several bags at once uh, as they shop. What, what does it do for you or for some of the employees to see the community giving back in such a way? Does, does it have any type of impact emotionally or kind of on the uh, morale there of the employees and stores? Absolutely. It's really a great impact to know that you can uh, help you know, the community out in a, such a time of need, especially now during the pandemic. Uh, now more than ever, I know that the uh, donations have been coming in uh, double what they used to be and the need at the donation uh, has been double what it used to be. So it's great to see the turnout and how uh, everybody just wants to help out. And again, just as easy as either putting something in the bin or donating $5 for one of these bags. Right? That's correct. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Dan, uh, we're going to go now over to Vanessa. And Vanessa, something that we were talking about is sort of the operations behind this, right? Making sure that we're getting out to these partners. And actually, guys, back out here live right now, going on is we are seeing the loading up of a lot of the food. Tell us, Vanessa, what is going on here and how can people access help? Absolutely. The San Diego Food Bank has seen a tremendous increase since the pandemic hit. Prior to the pandemic, we were serving 350,000 individuals each month. We're now serving over 600,000 individuals each month. That does not happen overnight and it is not easy. We are here today loading up trucks, unloading trucks of donations that are coming through in order to continue to meet that demand. Um, accessing services is a really important thing here. We want to make sure that families know how to get food. So on our website, sandiegofoodbank.org, you can uh, look up and see by your zip code how to find a distribution closest to your home. It'll tell you what you need to bring. Um, and we have all kinds of stuff like food, diapers. So really, um, that's, that's the best place to go to for accessing food. Well, thank you so much, Vanessa, for everything that you guys do. And we are so grateful to be here to have a chance to show this all off, to make sure that we get everybody in the community informed about how to help. Eric and Stella. All right, Chris, great. Yeah, they are busy there already. You got the uh, forklift operators. Those pallets are ready to go, uh, but we, we still need people to step up here. So, Chris, thanks for that. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's only 6 a.m. and they're already getting <laughs> yeah. to work. Let's go ahead and check in with Netta now for a look at our forecast. If you step outside in some places, it feels warm. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, this is pretty typical for us. It's June after all. We're getting close to officially the start of summer, although meteorological summer begins today as well. And, yeah, those guys are working really hard out there. It's like they work a morning shift, right? It's like something we're all too familiar with. Uh, good morning, everybody. Here's a view from, uh, you know, Del Mar Dog Beach. Right now, the dogs, a couple are sleeping in. We see one just going for that jog early this morning. And we're getting close to that low tide here in the next couple hours. So there'll be plenty of space for you to take your dog out there for a little stroll, maybe play in the waves. This morning, this view, I can't get over. The sun just coming up over the cloud coverage. Always looks so pretty. A chance to see that when you wake up early, right? Here's another view for you as well. Well, this is from Otai Mountain towards the east, and you can see less cloud coverage east of our mountains, at least less than what we saw yesterday at this time. We still have the marine layer right up until the mountains, though. Our coast is staying seasonal because of that weak onshore flow, and that is what brings in that marine layer. Inland temperatures, yeah, you're going to be about 5 to 10 degrees above normal. Let's time out the cloud coverage for you, too, because I know a lot of people wonder, is the sun going to come out today? Yes, it will. This shows it right here. By about 10.30, 11 a.m. 
a.m. You'll see plenty of sunshine all across the county and then hopefully by tonight you'll be able to see that sunset. I know we didn't really get a chance to see much of it yesterday with the clouds that came through, but it does look like we may have less cloud coverage tonight. Early tomorrow morning we may get a layer of high clouds that could roll in visibility. Well, at this hour you're fine across most of our major freeways, but right here along the 78 Ramona. There you go. You just drop now to a third mile visibility in Ramona. It's 54 degrees, 54 in Alpine, 60 in El Cajon. Chula Vista, you're at 61, 64 for downtown San Diego and not much change compared to yesterday. Our afternoon highs though today will feel a little bit warmer, especially for inland areas. We'll get more into those details in just a few minutes.